um, there's time at the end today to answer any questions. So if you find any questions during the presentation, please submit them in that chat box that appears at the bottom of your screen. Um, I will send out a follow-up email later this week um, that will include this recording, the presentations, and supplemental information, and all of the presenters' contact information. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ray Pickering, Director of Fauquier County Agricultural Development, to discuss the county's Purchase of Development Rights Program. Agriculture, Fauquier County's Agricultural Development Department, and uh, we're going to talk tonight about our County Purchase of Development Rights Program, also just known as a PDR program. Um, I've had the opportunity uh, to work uh, just about from the very beginning of the PDR program here in Fauquier, and it's really been exciting uh, to see the program grow and succeed over the years to now become the number one farmland preservation program in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, it's important to note that the PDR program is one of the relatively new uh, tools used by Fauquier County for farmland protection, following on really over 40 years of uh, public policy for land use uh, control, including the comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, uh, ag and parcel districts, land use taxation. Uh, but if we go to the next slide, we'll get started on the, the PDR program. Okay, so just some basics on what the P PDR program is and isn't. Uh, first of all, it's a voluntary uh, program, completely voluntary sale by a landowner of the development potential on farm and forest land. Uh, this is done through a permanent conservation easement, easement, which is purchased, in this case, by the county. The landowner receives compensation in return for giving up the right to develop the land. The landowner, however, retains title to the land and may sell or pass on the farm to others. PDR programs are also sometimes known as Purchase of Agricultural Easement Programs, or PACE. So if you hear that term, it's really synonymous with the PDR program. Next slide. So what are development rights? We're talking about residential division rights here in the PDR program. And these rights are one of the so-called bundle of rights associated with land ownership. And a locality may acquire or restrict development through a purchase, leaving possession and other use with the fee simple owners. Next. In Virginia, uh, the legal authority for local PDR programs is provided by the Open Space Land Act. Next, and the next couple of slides are just some, some shots of some of the farms that have been protected through the PDR program in Fauquier County. So we'll go one more. So the uh, goals and purpose of the PDR program, number one, is to preserve and enhance the agricultural industry, and second, to implement the county comprehensive plan, which called and recommended for a PDR program as one tool to preserve farmland. Next. Next slide. Uh, so this here is just a, uh, a snapshot of agriculture in Falkir County. Uh, we are still a very uh, significant ag county in Virginia. Uh, we rank in the top 10 in various categories, or actually number five in beef, beef cattle production. Uh, according to the U.S. Census of Agriculture for 2017, uh, agriculture uh, had cash receipts of about 55 million. Equine was about 54 million on uh, 216,000 plus acres of, of uh, farmland with uh, 1,154 farms. Uh, we took a look a few years ago at what we wanted to see was the total impact of uh, agriculture on the local economy using the uh, consultants at the Weldon Cooper Center at the University of Virginia. And 
So this takes into account the purchases and spending by farmers throughout the local economy. And they came up with a figure of over $300 million at that time. And I'm sure it's much higher than that now. Next slide. So the PDR program uh, operates through application rounds or cycles, and we are currently in one of those uh, right now, which ran, runs from April 1st through June 30th. And uh, this application form is available on the county website under the Agricultural Development Department. And if you uh, need any assistance or want to learn more about it, certainly uh, contact our Agricultural Development Office and we can help you uh, walk through the application process. Next slide. Okay, and we have uh, several uh, eligibility criteria for the PDR program. Uh, number one, that it has to be, <clears throat> excuse me, land that is uh, in production agriculture. It has to be uh, land that's greater than 50 acres, and that can be in one parcel or several contiguous parcels that total at least 50 acres. Uh, the parcel has to be zoned rural agricultural or rural conservation, and it cannot be under any other uh, conservation easement or restricted from development. Next slide. So the process, once uh, a landowner would make application, uh, we have a, a process of scoring those applications, and that's uh, a, a mechanism we have to sort of prioritize the, the applications for, for PDR, uh, because we'd normally get more applications than we have funding available. So we have a county PDR committee that helps us in that uh, scoring, and we take a look at a number of different factors uh, about the land. Uh, number one, the size of the parcel. Uh, basically, the larger, uh, the better. It's going to get a higher score. Uh, the average size of the farms that are accepted so far in the program is about 180 acres. Uh, so we do have some smaller and some larger. Uh, we second, take a look at the maximum potential residential density, uh, if any, after the easement goes on. In other words, if, is the landowner retaining any development rights or is he selling all of them? Uh, strategic value, we want to look at the threat of development. Uh, is there you know, a lot of road frontage? Is it uh, adjacent to a service district or is sewer uh, available? And we take a look at the soils on the property. Uh, are they suitable for on-site uh, septic systems or alternative systems? And we also want to look at uh, proximity to other eased land with the goal trying to be that we're making larger contiguous blocks of protected land. Uh, the other, another factor is the quality of the, the farmland soils. So we're taking into account prime farmland and uh, soils of statewide importance, uh, the most productive agricultural soils. And the next category is agricultural economic viability. So we want to see farms that are actively in agricultural use, uh, either you know, by the owner or they're leased to another uh, uh, farmer in the county. Uh, and does the farm have infrastructure such as barns, buildings, uh, fencing, uh, you know, water, uh, waterways, uh, improvements, and so on. And then finally, historic, scenic, and environmental qualities, we look at things like uh, is it located perhaps on a scenic road? Is it in a historic district? Uh, is the farmer implementing uh, BMPs or best management practices, uh, which could include things like stream buffers, stream crossings, and cover crops? So that all comes out to a score for each application, and that's how uh, the committee makes its recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. The top uh, ranking farms are recommended to the board and it's up to the board of supervisors to give the final approval. Uh, if a farm is approved, we then really enter into a, a real estate transaction and um, uh, development of a deed of easement. If we go to the next slide. And 
And that's just showing you we have a couple of different templates of a deed of easement that's used in the PDR program. And uh, those are available on the county uh, website as well under agricultural development. So you can take a look at those. Uh, but we strongly recommend that uh, the landowners uh, work with an attorney uh, to, uh, to develop that easement and make sure you're comfortable with the, uh, the terms of the easement uh, prior to closing. Next slide. And one more. So the current payment that's made under the PDR program is $25,000 per residential development right. Uh, the funding for the PDR program uh, is provided by the county uh, through a real estate tax that is dedicated to the PDR program uh, and other sources as well. Uh, over the life of the program, about two-thirds of the funding has come from that local real estate tax. Uh, other sources of funding from non-county sources uh, have included grants from Virginia Department of Agriculture, Virginia Department of Conservation and uh, Recreation, uh, funding from USDA, and also funding from the Department of Defense through a program uh, that is working with Marine Corps Base Quantico, Quantico to protect land around the edges of, of the, the, uh, the Marine Corps Base. And also, we've gotten uh, several uh, commitments of funding from PEC through the Julian Shear Land Conservation Fund to help protect farms in, in uh, southern Fauquier County. Uh, the number of development rights for each parcel uh, come from the Fauquier County uh, Zoning Ordinance. And it's based on the sliding scale in the RA Zoning District. And if an applicant uh, application comes in, we here at the County Ag Development Office get that uh, research done by the zoning office that tells us the number of rights that are available on each parcel. So that's, that's how we calculate the amount that's paid uh, under the PDR program. It's a cash payment uh, that is made at closing. And if we'll go to the next slide. And we also uh, work with the landowners to point out that uh, the program is compatible with a couple of different programs. Uh, if the landowner gets an appraisal done on that property to show the, the full amount of the appraised easement value, uh, the difference between that, if there is any difference between that and the cash payment is considered a bargain sale and there may be applicability of the Virginia Land Preservation Tax Credit as well as a federal charitable deduction. And I believe, uh, Claire, the next segment will get into more detail and show some examples of how that, uh, how that can work. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, the current status of the PDR program in Fauquier, uh, we have uh, easements, PDR easements, currently in place on about 74 farms, over 13,000 acres, and 665 development rights have been purchased so far. Uh, Falker County also uh, has a program where they, they will accept donated conservation easements on land. Uh, there's about 8,000 acres under those easements currently in the county. Uh, so we have a uh, total number of easements uh, in the county is about 150 on 21,000 acres total. Right, if we'll go to the next slide. And I wanted to show you, this is a map of all the conservation easements in Fauquier County. They total now just a little bit under 110,000 acres. Uh, there's easements held by quite a number of organizations and this map shows in the bright green are the farms that have been protected under the PDR program to date. Again, a little bit over 13,000 acres. And again, that is the number one PDR program in the state of Virginia. Next slide. And that's just a little chart showing the progress of the PDR program over the years. 
been a steady increase in the amount of acreage that, uh, that has uh, been accepted into the program. And next slide. And I've got a couple of slides here uh, that just show some of the farms that have been accepted into the program. Uh, this is Englewood Farm, south of Bealton, about uh, 350 acres of grain farm. Next slide. This is um, the uh, Coulon Farms owned by the Ken Smith family near Remington. And they've entered in now about 800 acres into the PDR program. This is an active dairy farm with, uh, I believe they're currently milking over 800 cows. Uh, this is a fifth generation dairy farm. And uh, this is the farm that provides the milk that goes into the ice cream that is sold at the booth through uh, ice cream store on, on Route 29. Next slide. Uh, this is a farm uh, down in the, the far southern end of the county, very close to the Marine Corps Base Quantico and uh, in Cedar Run District. Uh, this is a property uh, farm that was actually purchased by a landowner with proceeds from another farm that he had entered into the PDR program. Next slide. And this farm is actually uh, one of about 150 acres that is actually located next to the Ken Smith Dairy Farm near Remington. So it shows that we are building those uh, contiguous blocks of protected land. Next slide. And that is just a slide showing you the uh, membership uh, on the PDR committee as well as the Board of Supervisors and our Ag Agricultural Development Department with our contact information. Uh, again, a lot of that information on the application and the deeds uh, is all found at www.falkyerag.com. And either myself or my assistant, Raquel, can uh, certainly are happy to, to assist anyone that may be interested in further uh, uh, information on the PDR program. Next slide. And that's just showing a sign that we make available to all the farms that go in the program. You may see some of them around the countryside. And one more slide. And I just wanted to, to conclude with this to, for me, really the PDR program uh, is about preserving farmland for the future generations uh, who want to farm in Fauquier County and continue our agricultural heritage. And with that, I'll conclude, and I guess we'll turn it back over to the moderator. Great, thank you so much, Ray. And with that, uh, we will turn over to Claire Catlett. All right, thanks everyone for being with us today. And I'm Claire Catlett. I am a land conservation field representative uh, with the Piedmont Environmental Council. I work in Fauquier and Rappahannock counties, um, but similar to Maggie, I grew up in Fauquier County, have, have enjoyed living here um, for a lot of my time and uh, I'm really excited now that my work with the Piedmont Environmental Council um, gets me out in the field meeting landowners like yourselves and um, being able to sh share with you my love of land and also see and meet you and uh, know how much you love your land is a great joy of being here. So that is who I am and why I'm here today. Um, and Maggie introduced herself earlier. We also have um, Ray, who you've just heard from, Ray Pickering, who's the director of Fauquier County's Agricultural Development Program. And I just wanted to give him um, a quick shout out for receiving an award from the governor. He did mention that Fauquier County leads the state in their purchase of development rights. 
uh, program. And this past fall, um, Governor Northam uh, recognized Fauquier County as well as several other counties as leaders in the state for conservation. So thank you, Ray, for all of the work you do. And then Mike Kane is also part of our land conservation team at PC. He is our director of land conservation and holds lots of experience and expertise on conservation easements and is a great resource uh, for any of you that would like to follow up. Um, and I'll have more to share with you as follow up at the end of this presentation. But that is uh, your team of, of who's on this webinar today. A quick overview of, of what I hope to share. Um, we're gonna walk through what is a conservation easement and look at what are the common conservation easement questions that you might have. We will give a brief overview of financial and tax benefits and the conservation easement steps. And finally, I mentioned we have resources for you as landowners uh, that will be available following this presentation. Um, we'll send out an email with links. And then also we'll have some time, we hope, for some questions with our audience. So let's get started. I want to thank the Piedmont Environmental Council's Julian Shear Fauquier Land Conservation Fund for um, several decades of commitment and their work to protect land in Fauquier County through conservation easement programs. They are a longtime supporter of the Purchase of Development Rights Program. And the Julian Shear Fauquier Land Conservation Fund is named after Julian Shear, who um, you might recognize as a wonderful ally of the Piedmont and worked many years tirelessly to protect and conserve the land that we all love here. Our funds um, are part of PEC's regional advisory boards and they fundraise locally to support the costs of land conservation transactions, conservation easements, and the best management practices and environmental education that we lead in the Piedmont. We have some members of our Fauquier Fund even with us on this webinar today. So thank you so much for joining us. And those advisory board members, we have Margareta Stevens, who's the chair, Susan Shear, Larry Gerhardt, Hope Porter, Jocelyn Sladen, and Doug Larson. I wanted to give a quick overview of what PEC does and, and where we work. Many of you are familiar with our work and, and probably have been with us at other events. Um, we are a nonprofit land trust, and we have worked in Virginia's Piedmont since 1972 to protect and preserve the place that is so special here for its scenic beauty, natural resources, ecology, significant history, agricultural, and local economies. Our nine county region starts in Loudoun County at the northern part of the state, includes Clark, Fauquier, Rappahannock, Culpeper, Madison, Green, and Albemarle counties. Uh, together, landowners like yourself have left a legacy for the Piedmont. You have donated over 421,415 acres as permanent protected conservation easements. That's a significant contribution to this time and place, but also to the future generations of our communities here in the Piedmont, so thank you. You can see in the chart here, we have a list of each county and the contributions they've made to protection in the Piedmont. I also wanna note that as Ray showed in that earlier map, there are so many nonprofit land trusts working together. We have a great uh, community of land trust and local county governments supporting conservation in the Piedmont. Some of those are the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, the Land Trust of Virginia, the American Battlefield Trust, and many, many others. So this is a team effort, and I wanna thank each of those organizations and the thousands of families that have worked together to keep land protected in the Piedmont. Here in Fauquier County, uh, we have a lot to show for conservation. We are a leader in the Piedmont and have protected over a quarter of the county in conservation easement. That is a total of 100, 108,687 acres in the end that we are looking at today as land held in conservation easement and donated by landowners like yourselves. 
Last year, we had a great year. We saw a new uh, 1,617 acres of donated easements. Uh, we're hoping this year, 2020, we'll follow in those footsteps and we'll see another great year for conservation here in Fauquier in the Piedmont. Let's talk about what a conservation easement is. An easement is a voluntary agreement between a landowner and a land trust or government agency to limit future development on the property. A conservation easement also advances conservation purposes and results in public benefit. That's an important point and I wanna hold a star there and I'll have a slide in a minute about those public benefits. Also, conservation easements are always consistent with local comprehensive plans. Ray mentioned how Fauquier County has long planned ahead for conservation and there is significant language in our Fauquier County comprehensive plan that points out the conservation benefits and open space land protections that our county uh, will hopefully result in through the accomplishments they seek in their comprehensive plan. And most importantly, a conservation easement is forever. A easement permanently protects your land, and this is a gift you are providing as a landowner to the future generations of landowners that will either inherit or purchase or live on your property and all of the communities that surround your property as well. As a landowner, I'm going to guess you've got some ideas of why you might be thinking about it easement for your property or any conservation in general, whether it's the PDR program or, or other ways you might protect your land and enhance it. The first reason I always hear when I'm out in the field with landowners is you love your land. And this is an obvious place to start. There's a lot to cherish. You've invested a lot of time and energy and potentially even a lot of money into your property and you cherish your home and that's important for why you might want to pursue a conservation easement. We have in these pictures, I want to point out the, the really special place and magical place that is Bonnie Brook Farm near Catlett, Virginia. PEC's Julian Cheer Fauquier Fund annually hosts a Bluebell Walk there and this is a picture from last year's Bluebell Walk. It's a long cedar run and these uh, wildflowers spring up in early April, and it's so generous that the landowner, Margaret Stevens, shares um, her passion for the Cedar Creek watershed and gives us a tour of Bonnie Brook Farm and the bluebells there each spring. The second reason on your list, maybe it's also that you love your land, and not to say that everyone has the same ways they love their land, uh, the Elgin family is a very passionate family who has run nine generations of family cattle farming on their property near Aldi, Virginia. In 2019, they installed some stream exclusion fencing through a soil and water district program called a Best Management Practice. And the John Marshall Soil and Water Conservation District and the Piedmont Environmental Council were very much involved in helping make sure that these enhancements to their property as it's also held in conservation easement happened. And so there are many ways to love your land and many times and places where you will choose to continue with conservation throughout your property's history. Um, you may see this family's face and their story again soon. Uh, PEC has just published our land conservation update for 2020 and it's gone out to the post office and hopefully will show up in your mailbox in the next week. And also after this presentation, we will give you an electronic version of our land conservation update so that you can see and read about the Elgin family and their story for conservation. I brought up that the Elgin family uh, worked with our soil and water districts for conservation best management practices. I'm gonna give you a quick outline of what those are. We work often um, with landowners who want to do right for their land and improve water quality and enhance the soils and agriculture protection on their land. And that's a big um, step uh, for a lot of folks to take and it can mean an investment in their property. Luckily, the state of Virginia has invested uh, fully funding uh, the cost share programs for these agriculture best management practices in 2019 and 2020. Right now, landowners can receive 80 to 90% cost share funding to 
do these best management practices, such as cattle exclusion fencing, water sources, hard and stream crossings, crops and no-till practices, nutrient management plans, and then important for some dairy farmers, composting and waste management systems. The Piedmont Environmental Council regional advisory boards like the Goose Creek Fund, and I've mentioned the Fauquier Fund a few times, are also working with landowners to help uh, promote these projects for best management practices by um, creating revolving loans or short-term loans to these landowners that might wanna take that next step and protect their land um, additionally through these practices. All right. Another good reason to go for a conservation easement is that you love your land. I can't think of a better example of a family that loves their land than the Smith family. And Ray was able to give them as an example earlier, they're a shining star of a Fauquier family that truly um, loves their land and loves their community and does everything to promote conservation on their farm and in their communities. So Kulon Farm was protected as a conservation easement with the Fauquier County's easement program and also enrolled in the purchase of development rights program um, several years ago. And that investment that they made in protecting the land and a conservation easement paid off for them because the PDR funds they were able to achieve helped them expand their family business and even uh, were essential in creating the Muthir ice cream business that we all now can enjoy on our way down through Southern Fauquier as a pit stop. So thank you again, Ben and Ken Smith. Uh, we are so happy that you have uh, worked with Piedmont Environmental Council and Fauquier County throughout the years. All of these landowners that I've just shared their stories of love for their land are examples also of how an easement can be for public benefit. And this is an essential part of what a conservation easement is. So I'm going to go over how we look at this public benefits now. We define public benefits as conservation values in, in easements terms. Those conservation values are riparian areas, those are forests along streams, agricultural soils, forests, and the forestry best practices that we would have on a property. Scenic values, so the views from scenic roads, rivers, and view sheds from parks. Historic resources, such as historic landmarks, battlefields, study area, and the national historic districts that many of our Fauquier County communities are part of. And finally, natural habitat. And this is identified by Virginia's Natural Heritage Program, the special and significant ecosystems for rare threatened plants and animals. So Piedmont Environmental Council, I want to share with you some of the ways we can help you achieve a conservation easement um, beyond just some of the things I've already run through. We are technically uh, savvy and are able to help you map your property and map these conservation resources. This is a great tool for a landowner that wants to learn more about their property. So we can share with you where are the historic districts, where are the floodplains, so I have a couple examples and I'll point them out just so you can see as, as we go through here. The top slide is a property actually in Culpeper County. There's the Hazel River running through the bottom of this property. And all of this blue shadow around the river is the 100-year FEMA floodplain. And for this conservation easement, we were able to protect that floodplain. And so you can see within the yellow boundaries of the property, the outline of that FEMA floodplain. Keeping your eyes on that top map, we also have in this property in Culpeper County, a significant portion of Civil War Battlefield Study Area that was part of the Brandy uh, Station 1 Battlefield Area and a Little Fork Historic Church, which is up at the top of the property, not on the property, but on the other side of the road. So all of this yellow area at the top of that property is sharing um, with the landowner where these historic resources are located. Finally, my last example to point out is how we look at view sheds. So the property on the bottom is along a scenic road. You can see in the yellow line down at the bottom um, left hand of the map. And 
everything to the right of that yellow line is a scenic view shed you could view from the road. Finally, in the back of the property, if you continue moving towards the right of the bottom map, you'll see uh, another shaded yellow area, and that's actually the view shed of the Shenandoah National Park. So again, we want to help landowners understand what is um, a conservation value, but also help understand what is so special about their property. Let's go through some common easement questions together. First, often I hear, who can hold a conservation easement? Gray brought this up, but just to be clear, there are three categories of organizations that can hold an easement. So first we have state agencies, such as Virginia Department of Forestry, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, which is a charitable arm of the state and holds conservation easements. VOF is commonly the terminology you might hear for the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, and they hold many, many easements in the state and especially in Fauquier County. Also, local governments are key players. Ray really emphasized this point with the county's easement and purchase of development rights program. And so we um, are very thankful that our local government is very involved in support of, of easements. And then finally, nonprofit organizations, land trusts like the Piedmont Environmental Council hold conservation easements. There are a few other uh, land trusts that you might see and hear about locally in Fauquier, Land Trust of Virginia, the Nature Conservancy, American Battlefield Trust, lots and lots of land trusts out there. And I do just wanna make the point that PEC, we work with all of these land trusts and help you as a landowner find the right fit in working with a land trust or county as you might pursue a conservation easement. All right, you're putting together your team. You're very serious about an easement maybe, and you want to know who's gonna help you. Well, I'm here to help, Maggie's here to help, Ray's here to help. And PEC, we're going to help you navigate the steps of donating an easement from start to finish. Fauquier County has a PDR program we've talked about earlier, and they are a great source of technical expertise. Ray's office, if you just call them and ask them a question, they will come and, and answer your question diligently and thoughtfully. So um, we have a great resource in Ray in his office. Attorney is someone that you're gonna add to your team to help draft the easement and you're going to look for an attorney who is familiar with conservation easements. You'll also want a financial and tax advisor that is going to help you regarding the potential tax implications and benefits with an easement, which I'll talk about soon. And then you'll want to add a real estate appraiser to your team. An appraiser that would be qualified for conservation easement appraisals will complete a written report. And this report is how we determine an easement's value. I'll talk about that in just a minute. So when we're talking about an easement's value, we're thinking about, okay, what are some of the ways that we would look at the federal tax benefits? So the federal tax benefits are used as a tax deduction on your federal taxes. And this is a deduction that is equal to the value of the conservation easement's value as it is a charitable gift. So, um, when you look at a conservation easement's value, you'll be running it at a rate of 50% towards your income um, as a, a land, most traditional landowners. But if you work your land and are a qualifying farmer, and this is an IRS um, detail, so follow up with your financial advisor on this, but that is making over 50% of your income from your farm, you can use up to 100% of your AGI um, towards calculating your, your federal tax deduction. And also a lot of landowners find that they are not fully able to use the federal tax deduction as it is the value of their easement. And so just to be informed that you can carry over the federal tax deduction for up to 15 years. An important note here, um, when we're talking about claiming a charitable deduction with the IRS, um, any deed of trust must be subordinated to the conservation easement. And this is an important step you will work through um, as you move through the easements process with your attorney. All right, the tax benefits you can gain at the state level are through the Virginia Land Preservation Tax Credit Program. 
Virginia has done a great job of promoting and protecting land through easements and our legislators have created a land preservation tax credit program to, to really make it possible for a lot of landers to, to see the value in doing a conservation easement financially. So this is an income tax credit that is used against your income tax as a landowner that is applied at a rate of 40% of the easement's value. And landowners can use the Virginia Land Preservation Tax Credit for up to $50,000 annually, and then again across a range of 10 years from the date of the conservation easement's completion. And an important note is that unused credits, a lot of times a landowner might have extra credits that they can't use towards their state taxes, and those unused credits can be sold to buyers on the state's tax credit market. Okay, so let's talk about getting that easement value. How do we do that? Well, again, I mentioned the appraiser will help you do this, and that's part of the uh, appraiser's report. But we can run a quick example here to get you in the range of what an easement's value looks like. We'll do some simple math using a property that's worth a million dollars, and that's the value of the property before conservation easement. Next, we'll look at what the value of the property is after conservation easement. And this will be $600,000 in the example. And usually you'll see a difference of 30 to 60% from the before value to the after value with a conservation easement. And that's because of the restrictions on development that an easement will have. And so when you look at the difference between a million dollars as your before value and the $600,000 as the after an easement real estate value for the property, you have a value of a conservation easement equal to $400,000. This is conservation you claim as a charitable tax deduction for federal and state taxes. And one caveat here is that PEC, I'm giving you an example, and this is not meant as technical advice, tax advice, or legal advice otherwise. Uh, we know that every landowner is um, going to need to examine their own particular situation with a legal or financial advisor. But we'll play a little further with these numbers um, so you can see some of the estimated tax benefits using the state and federal programs. So again, the before easement value for this property was a million dollars. After an easement, the property's value was $600,000. The easement's value is 40% of that value, so $400,000. Now we have the estimated benefits. We have the state tax credit program, and that can be applied as 40% of the conservation easement value. So 40% of $400,000 being $160,000 available in state tax credits. To move further, we can look at the federal tax deduction available. And this is going to be the difference between the easements value and any state tax credits that you might have used. So in this example, we'll say that less the $160,000 used for tax credits, a remainder of $240,000 is available towards a federal tax deduction. We've covered a lot of steps for an easement, but an important thing to keep in mind as you go through the easement process are some of the soft costs that might incur. And I want to remind you that the PEC Fauquier Land Conservation Fund has for decades offered financial aid for these soft costs and has fundraised for properties that are being put through our purchase of development rights applications and donated conservation easements to Fauquier County and PEC. Um, and some of these costs you might see are what your attorney prices are, which vary greatly, an appraisal's cost, and finally, with PEC and other nonprofit land trust, we ask for a stewardship gift at the time of the easement. And this is a chance for us to remind ourselves the importance of protecting land forever. It is a great gift that, and a great legacy you will leave as a landowner to donate your land as a conservation easement to future generations. And PEC is going to manage and steward your conservation easement into the future, into perpetuity, as we say. 
So this stewardship gift ensures that we can permanently protect as a land trust your property. Well, thank you so much for being with us through this presentation. I want to wrap up here and just walk through again some of these benefits of working um, towards a conservation easement for your property. We talked a lot about how this is an opportunity for you to permanently protect the land you love. Also, this is a great way for you to extract some of the land's cash value now. It also, um, at a conservation easement, allows you to retain the right to own your property and also farm your property and, and use the land. You also are able to maintain the ability to sell your property subject to the easement restrictions. And also a lot of folks find that going through the easement process is, is a key step for how they can work towards estate planning and their next generation plans for their property. And finally, this is a great way for you as a landowner to really engage with your community and those broader goals for public benefit. A lot of folks see the land around them as protected in easement and want to join up with their neighbors and add their property to that permanent protected landscape that we all enjoy, farm, and live here for. So with that, I will put myself um, available for any questions. And Maggie and I are here now, but also here's our contact information for follow-up after this program. Mike Kane, our Director of Conservation at TEC, is also available, and Ray Pickering. There will be some resources coming to you following this webinar, so thank you very much for checking your inbox. You're going to see an option to view this webinar again if you'd like. We are recording this webinar. We also will have these PowerPoint presentations available for you to view and download. And we'll have the Fauquier County Purchase of Development Rights Program's 2020 application as a link for you. We will give you extra resources on our PEC land conservation update, as well as our local soil and water district best management practices cost share programs. So we have John Marshall here in Fauquier County that is uh, ready to work with you. Culpeper Soil and Water District, which works in Rappahannock, Culpeper, Orange, Madison and Green Counties, and the Natural Resource Conservation Service. And thank you so much. I'm gonna put it up for questions now. Great, thank you, Claire, so much. Um, both you and Ray did an excellent job and um, it always leaves a, me very inspired um, and ready to work with folks. So thank you for that information. Um, so we just have about five minutes left of the presentation since we wanna get you guys out on time. And we did have a couple of questions that came in. So I will just launch right into it. Um, Claire, so if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, and um, Ray, I have uh, taken the liberty of taking you off of mute. Um, so first question, um, how long does the process typically take for a motivated farmer or landowner to enter into a purchase of development rights program easement? Well, it, it varies. Um, it can be probably on the short end, maybe as little as six months. And it could range up to you know, a year, year and a half if it gets a little more complicated uh, with uh, perhaps issues with lenders or various questions that may come up. So on average, you know, six months to a year. Great. Um, a follow-up question to that. Uh, you mentioned that this next PDR round that we are in right now um, is open through the end of June. So if folks are just learning about this now and want to learn more, um, when will the next round of PDRs be, the next application round? Uh, we have not set another round, but uh, recently we have had two rounds per year. So it's possible we may have one later in the year, uh, perhaps uh, November, December, somewhere in that, in that ballpark. Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, next question for Claire, 
Um, does the Piedmont Environmental Council charge a fee to help landowners through the easement donation process? That's a good question. And quickly, no. Um, there are no fees that the Piedmont Environmental Council charges to work towards your goals for a conservation easement. As a um, technical service provider, we just want to help you through all the steps and uh, we are here for you no matter what. Great. Thank you. Um, we had a question that just came in through the chat um, that could be open for either of you. Um, is there a way that either of you can define the difference between um, the advantages of either going through a PDR program easement or going through a donated conservation easement program? Well, I guess, um, you know, it really comes down to um, which you're more comfortable with. Does it make uh, more sense for your uh, family situation to enter into a PDR easement or perhaps go the route of a donated easement? The PDR program, of course, um, provides a cash payment at the time of closing uh, with the possibility of some tax benefits uh, subsequent to closing. Um, so uh, it's just a matter of, of which, which is more comfortable for the owner. Yeah, and to add on to that, I remember in one of your earlier slides, um, there, are, there are some qualifications um, to enter into the PDR easement. So being a bona fide farming operation is probably one of those initial, you know, uh, ways to, to lead out uh, which direction one one Right, is, you know, active agriculture and of course 50 acres is the minimum for the PDR program. Perfect. Um, I think that we might have time for one more question, um, and this might get into the technical part, um, but how does somebody sell tax credits? I'll answer that question. The tax credits available with the state uh, um, land protection program is something you would consult with a tax credit broker about, and they would help you um, sell those credits and, and to decide how much um, you would be able to make from the sale of those tax credits. Great. Well, thank you, Claire and Ray. I believe that's all that we have time for today. Um, so as Claire described in our final slide, we will follow up with each of you individually um, with a copy of this presentation, um, both of the presenter slides and all of those resources to help you explore conservation options for your property. So again, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful afternoon. Um, and we hope that you join us again and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you all.